Number two, <clears throat> why are you in your 40s and 50s just getting a passport? That just shows me how uncultured, <laughs> ignorant, and some of y'all stupid you all are. Number three, what makes y'all think when y'all fly over to a foreign country that these women gonna want y'all? Not saying that some won't. Not saying that. But what makes what is, makes y'all think all of y'all that's flying over there, all these women gonna want y'all? Well, this woman woke up and chose violence. So let's deal with it with violent truth. She's talking about men in their 40s and 50s. Men in that age bracket are at the height of their sexual market value if they did the work on themselves, of course. Men in that age range, if they are still single, have the pick of the litter. And guess what? In the opposite hand, single women in that age range are totally invisible to men their own age. Basically, those women SMV is literally in the toilet. The only men they can attract are young men who are financially struggling and into shady businesses. Men who have no shame and will do anything for money. So, when these kind of women see men of their own age taking their attention and money and give it to women who are younger than them, they literally lose it. And to add insult to injury, instead of doing it in the West, where men can deal with those women younger sisters, men are going abroad, leaving those women entire families with little to no options. And just a bonus of knowledge here, this is also the kind of women who love to shame men using the midlife crisis tactics. If you are a well-observing person, women start to talk about men's midlife crisis right about the time men are between the ages of 45 and 55. Because SMV-wise, that is the period that most men are at the top, and most women are literally in the crapper till death. And for single women in that age bracket, the only men who can save them and be fitting husbands for them, are men in the same age bracket. But guess what, they are invisible to those men so, the only thing they can do is to shame and insult. These are the women who got their gifts early from nature, and they failed to secure a husband. Instead they used their youth to ride every horse on the carousel. Now that they are older, they want a captain save a hoe. Okay, listen up. You can get your passport in just a, a few days. You can expedite it. You pay a little extra fee, it comes real, real quick. Because you know what? Despite, you know, what others think, I'm in support of all of y'all. Your kind. <laughs> yep. Leaving the country. Oh, look at that. She's back. It's been a while. Well, if you want to support them, how about shutting the F up and actually buy them tickets? And looking for a wife. Good luck with that. <laughs> I hope y'all got some coins. Because women in other countries don't do 50-50. <laughs> and in case you don't know that's how it actually works, the man works, brings in the finances, and the woman takes cares of the house. So, what's your point, Braces? That's why she cooks and cleans. Because she ain't working nowhere. And her family gonna make sure of it. By the way, get ready for them to come and move into your house, too. <laughs> Y'all good luck with that. One big happy family. I'm in full support. Go for it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Wow. Here's the disrespect, again. These people are not poor. Are they regions that are less ideal than others? Yes. But all those regions are safer than Chicago. The reason why most women overseas cook, clean, and take care of the house is because they are raised to be wives and mothers. They are taught how to keep a husband, which is something that women in the Western world struggle with. Women in the West know how to attract a man, but they don't know how to keep that man after the dude has busted his nut. The reason why all these bitter past around women are on social media talking about passport bros is because they know that they can't compete with the women overseas. And here they are, looking stupid and sending mixed messages. Someone who has lived in other countries for a number of years, let me tell you, black men are the only one doing this. Men of all races are doing this. This practice has been going on for so long. It's only the broke black men who out here clout chasing and who think they're really doing some new shit. Then why do you care? You know that in order for a man to travel, be it a black, white, or Asian man, in order for a man to travel, he must have his finances in order. 
It is not like some women who get flown out so that they can get banged by some millionaire in Dubai, or some rappers or athletes. Men are going overseas and they are witnessing what real women look like, and when they come back to the US, they prepare themselves to go back for longer, and while preparing, they share the good news to other men who are wanting to bail. Are the ones who are talking about it. I'm gonna tell you what the real lick is. The men who can afford to go over there, put them a wife in a house, keep her over there, and still maintain back in the States. That's the lick. No, those men aren't outlayers. Those are the men that you want. That's why you are on social media trying to shame men not to go overseas. Okay. Like I said, the only reason why this is a trend now is because all the broke boys who couldn't afford it 20, 30, 40 years ago have the money or they think they have it. No, it is not because broke people got money now. It is a trend because your men are tired with your bull crap and the broke men are not traveling. They are staying because they are the kind of men you feminists are attracted to. That's it for this video, guys. But before I go, let me at least send you off on a good note from the few women whose brains are not rotten. Men are saying they're getting their passport because there aren't enough fit, feminine and friendly women to choose from. And instead of looking in the mirror and asking ourselves if we would make great wives to these men, we would much rather shame them and guilt them into staying with our mediocre asses. Ma'am, if you're not fit, feminine, or friendly, then you're not what these men want. Shut your ass and go to the gym. Like, do we see how toxic we are? <laughs> Sensational. They don't want a partnership. They don't want to have to, you know, bicker or figure out who's leading and what scenario at what time. A lot of guys at the end of the day, when they're looking for wives, when they're looking for long-term partners, they just want wives. They don't want this whole co-lead, co-partner, co-parent, co-lead. A lot of them are not into that. Now, I'm not saying that this means that uh, it's going to be like a complete dictatorship. <laughs> but um, what's going on right now in this culture where men and women are essentially placed in positions to be co-equal, uh, a lot of guys just are not interested in that dynamic when it comes to marriage in particular why because the expectations are still for men to do and provide and act in ways that are still very much traditional so it looks like a bad deal it's like i'm still i'm still expected to put my life in the line to make all this money to go and you know do all this work and to provide a safe stable home but now my partner has the freedom to one day be traditional, to another day be modern, to one moment be her in a feminine, to another moment be in her masculine. And it just sounds like a bad deal.